Welcome, everyone, to this week's edition of the Commercial Real Estate 101 Meetup Group. Uh, for those of you guys who are tuning in for the first time, uh, we do this on a bi-monthly basis. So every other week, we invite speakers to talk about a variety of different topics, usually pertaining to commercial real estate. But today, we actually have someone who you know, isn't necessarily directly in the commercial real estate industry, but I think can have significant value if you are you know, a commercial real estate professional, whether you're a lender, broker, investor, et cetera. I think podcasting, as we, as we all know, is is been a huge medium. It's it's been continually growing over time, uh, and I think that Rob uh, Johnstone with the uh, Wayne Media Group here locally in Louisville, who they're 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 experts at at growing and and creating podcasts, and they work with people not only locally but outside of the local area as well. So I think they're going to add a lot of value to us uh, as a group. So uh, welcome, Rob. Great to see you, man. Hey, Raphael. Thanks for having me today. Always a uh, always appreciate being you know having the opportunity to have a conversation with you. Oh yeah, and no. Thanks everybody else for joining in. <laughs> oh, for sure. And we're we're live on LinkedIn as well. Uh, so the, you guys, those of you guys who are on LinkedIn, uh, it's great to see you all as well. So uh, usually to start off, what we like to do is to learn a little bit more about the person who's across the table from us. So if you don't mind, kind of sharing a little bit about your backstory, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, I love talking about myself too. I already <laughs> know that. No, I'm just nice. kidding. But yeah. now I'll make this part short and sweet. Um, so I'm Robert Johnstone. I'm a co-owner of the Wayne Media Group. Uh, and the Speakeasy Podcast Network is one of our divisions too. Uh, with Wayne Media Group, where you have a team of experts that grow, grew quickly from two of us to now there's uh, 14 of us. And I think 13 of them know way more about social media and everything else than they, even I know nowadays. So we're, we're going heading in the right direction. We do all different types of service in that, services in that realm. Um, social media management, website development, have on-staff photography. Um, but a few years ago, as we were kind of looking into, okay, well, what's, what's continuing to show potential within the marketing realm, especially for, you know, focused on local businesses, primarily small and local businesses. Uh, we saw that opportunity with podcasting and how multifaceted it is and just how much people were, you know, needing that experience too, which uh, COVID actually kind of helped with the studio approach because we were able to put in some really good uh, procedures and policies, but yeah, we, we opened up the Speakeasy Podcast Network about two years ago, uh, and it's a studio location with one in Jefferson Town area of Louisville, Kentucky, and we have another two up in Michigan, um, and, you know, soon, hopefully more to come soon, but we have various different podcasters. I think we have about 70 on as clients right now, both in studio and through our remote services, and we handle their podcast, coach them on it, do the marketing, um, do the editing, distribution, scheduling, show notes, you name it. If it's touching the podcast, they just kind of have to come in here and get in from the mic like I am right now. And one of our engineers will take care of everything else. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the gist of the business. Before I got into all of that, I was a Marine for quite some time. I worked on F-18s, taught martial arts, and then taught at a schoolhouse for a period of time. Uh, I was watching maybe a little bit too much Mad Men, and I really loved the Super Bowl commercials. So I was like, hey, I'm going to get a marketing degree. <laughs> Just kind of that that was um, honestly probably less thought than I put into it, but I'm super, super happy I got into this industry and I've, I've loved it ever since I stepped into that first class. And, you know, I've been a student of marketing, digital media, um, production and everything ever since. So that's amazing. Well, first off, thank you for your service. And um, also, if you, you guys don't know, uh, Rob is big into jujitsu as well. So he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, connoisseur when it comes to that sort of thing. But one thing I wanted to kind of touch on uh, starting out was you mentioned a little bit about you saw the opportunity in the podcasting space. What exactly, I guess, were the metrics or what, what exactly was 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 it that you analyzed that thought that made you think, OK, maybe this is a good opportunity for us to pursue and you know, why is it a value to, you know, business owners? Uh, I mean, if, if statistically, it's one of the fastest growing platforms out there, um, as far as a medium for people to use, uh, you know, there's well over a million podcasts that are in a active state on um, through Apple's podcasting. On top of that, the listenership continues to grow. It's a, it's, you know, a growth trajectory of 28% per year, year over year up till 20, I think 28 is what they have. It could be, don't quote me on that one. I would need to look a little bit deeper into it, but it's continuing to grow. And I think part of the reason that it's gr growing so quickly and it's growing successfully too, is it's has the ability to 
create so much content and so much trust within a, a company or an individual, you know, within a short, let's say 15 minute window, you know, a 15 minute windows of a podcast, if you were to do it correctly, you can get a month's worth of content out of that 15 minute conversation you had with somebody it spreads into different realms. It spreads into searchability. It spreads into your website. You know, you, it, it's just really this multifaceted piece that's relatively easy to produce, especially if you're being real and um, authentic about what you're doing. You know, there's, there's just a lot of capabilities with um, and outcomes that can come from having your own podcast. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and you kind of touched on a few of them is the repurposing piece of podcasting. Cause just because we're talking right now, right? This, this is a piece of content. And yeah. then, you know, we can take snips out of this podcast. Maybe I ask you a particular question and that's the short clip. It's like, Hey, why is podcasting such an important part of, you know, uh, the, the market going forward. And then you just have you talking for two minutes and then you could t turn it into a blog post if you transcribe it. And then you can have the audio and video versions that you could push on to, to different platforms as well. So, you know, I think that, like you said, that you could do so much with podcasting that's not just directly related to the audio because everyone thinks podcasting is just audio. It's not. You, if, you, if you record it and you incorporate it within other facets of your marketing approach, I mean, you could literally get 20 pieces of content from a, a conversation that you have with someone on a podcast. Two points on to that. Like, number one, one of my favorite and also frustrating parts of my job is, you know, I get to analyze uh say we have a 45 minute podcast, right? And, and our clients are doing marketing with us. I get to analyze that and pick those clips out for them, right? The only frustrating thing is sometimes it's like, I could probably find like 20 pieces of content with this one. So we're going to have to really, really work at how we're going to schedule this all out uh, and you know what we can do with it. And then what advice we can give to the client so they can continue to, to use the content piece off of that. Um, but yeah, also too, you know, that there is that sponsorship side too, and it, it's really, really compelling, um, it, as far as how sponsorships working out with podcasting right now, because number one, your audience, if they continue to listen to you, they're obviously showing they have a lot of trust in you. Uh, it, they, it, there's a relatability to it. So if they're willing to say, you know, jump on your 15 to 45 plus minute conversation each time, uh, it, statistically, it's been proven that they're, they're also trusting the products and services that you're promoting too. Uh, and I think somewhere 80 plus percent of people reported on who've, uh, you know, I, I, I'll put the survey, maybe we can put in the links afterwards, but have made purchase decisions based off of the podcast that they've listened to. Uh, and it's really compelling for, for sponsors too, because, you know, number one, it's evergreen, meaning that it's sticking around for, you know, indefinitely, right? Uh, there's also a, the, some of the benefits that don't get talked about is all the various different backlinks and social media posts and everything like that, that sponsors can grab onto with these podcasts and really, you know, have a, again, multifaceted approach to their advertising with a trusted audience that's listening in week over week. And, you know, so much that sponsorships can do for those podcasts. Hopefully I didn't get too far off topic. No, no. I think it's phenomenal what you shared. And, you know, I, again, I, I, obviously I, I do podcasting as well. I haven't gotten to the point of sponsorships yet, but it's pretty impressive. You know, the revenue stream that can be generated if your podcast yeah. does gain enough traction and not only that, but like, if, if, even if you're super niched, there's certain niches that are still very lucrative and commercial real estate, I imagine is a pretty, pretty lucrative niche to be in because any products or services you recommend may be of a high dollar value. Uh, so it, it could be another revenue stream for you. Well, for sure. And, you know, look at it this way. If I had a, let's say a podcast that's getting a thousand listeners, right. Compared to a ad that's, you know, has an ad in a paper or ad online that might have, you know, 20,000 impressions at the same time. My thousand listeners are listening to that specific content that I'm providing right? It's very niche. And that's what one of the other things that plays well into that advertising is, you know, you don't have to have a lot of listeners. So if you are a specific product or service that relates to that podcast, the audience that's listening, you know, especially in the business realm, they're most likely going to be the most qualified for your services instead of just blasting it in front of, you know, hundreds and or thousands and thousands of people who would never touch your service because it's not even part of their life. Exactly. No, for sure. And I think they're, like you said, that is a really, really strong value proposition. So, you know, there's people out there and I'm assuming, assuming there's people that are watching this, listening to this, you know, whether on the live stream or, or via the, 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 the actual podcast, uh, you know, that they're listening to that, 
maybe have an interest in starting a podcast, but they have no idea where to start. I mean, it is a process to get it up and going, and it's also a process to be able to get it to where you need it to be. So could you kind of tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe your experiences pertaining to, I mean, I guess, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to start a podcast? Uh, advice I would look to give some. Oh, he's back on. I'm going to answer this question real quick. You, sure. uh, you, you went off. I cut off. To, oh, sorry. Oh, you are good to go. The answer was, or the question was, is what advice would you give to somebody who's looking to start a podcast? Um, it, it, they're good enough, get involved with posting them. Um, so that's what I would say from like the psychological standpoint would be to, you know, start there, start by starting, you know, and, and realize that one of the very great benefits of podcasting is the authenticity part of it. So don't be afraid of not sounding perfect. People are actually tuning in for that. Like people don't want this super, super produced thing, especially from the business side of the help. They don't want it to be crazy produced to where you might not even be the, the real person behind the mic. They want to hear your, they want to hear everything about you. So I would say, go ahead and start recording. Um, on the other end of things though, you know, if we we're talking about from a technical approach, make sure that you're at least invested into some decent equipment. You don't need to go all out and, you know, build out a studio, but you do want a good microphone and you do want decent headphones. Um, that way you can hear everything back. Uh, you know, audio quality. It's just like, imagine watching a VHS tape today that has all the lines running through it. And then alternatively, you have a DVD or, a, you know, HD or it's just streaming on Netflix that's in perfect 4K. Um, gosh, even 8K nowadays. Uh, and you're going to pick which one of those movies to watch. It's the same thing with audio and our ears are even more sensitive than we give credit to. So if you are having very poor audio quality, that can affect your listenership. Um, so I would, I would start there. I would start with starting and I would start with investing in a decent mic. And a lot of times too, you know, if there's services that are um, particular to ours, like shameless pitch right here, but we, we could definitely give advice too for how to start a podcast and, you know, either give you some in-studio services for a short period of time or indefinitely as well. So I All hope right. that answered your question. No, definitely. And, 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 you know, Ellen was asking, what is a decent mic? I mean, there, there's several ones online. If you just look up good, best mics under 150 bucks, like you could usually find some pretty good ones. The one I have right now, I can't remember the exact model or anything, but it was under $150. So, you know, yeah. the, the, the mic, the mic itself is relatively affordable. Um, but you're right. I think that the sound quality is, 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 is game changing because, you know, when I listen to podcasts, I can tell the difference between someone who's has a professional mic and someone who has like, you know, they're on Zoom, but with um, just with with the, the onboard mic for a computer, it just it's just a lot different. Sure. And then as far as the idea for the podcast is concerned, because I, I've heard a lot of people say something along the lines of, you know, well, there's already so many real estate podcasts. So there's already so many different types of you know, this fill in the blank type podcast, how am I going to really differentiate myself? I was just kind of curious if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, just try to recognize your strengths and weaknesses and what you're interested in. Um, I'll bring up an example real quick of one that I really like, because you are right, there's there's a ton of different real estate podcasts out there. That's why you have to let your personality shine. And you have to recognize too, that not everybody's going to like your personality. And you can't change it uh, to make everybody like it. I say this a lot and I'm trying to remember exactly who it is. It might be Simon Sinek, but he says, if you build something that everybody likes, then nobody's going to love it. And I think it's important to recognize like, Hey, be unique, be your personality. And that's, what's going to separate you from the rest of the pack is by being yourself. And people are going to, people are like you, they're going to gravitate towards your podcast. Even if you don't have the, the, as good of information as the next person, of of course, you should strive to have that, especially in real estate, keep up with what's going on, but your personality needs to shine through too. Uh, and I was going to give you an example of one that's a little bit different that we started recently. Um, uh, he's not, he hasn't launched yet, so I'm not going to give out his name, uh, but 
we have a real estate agent, a local one, who is taking a different approach, for example, and, and real estate secondary to the podcast. What it's about, though, is he was a college athlete, and he's actually going to, talking to former collegiate and professional athletes on a weekly basis about the business world it's a transitioning uh, environment. It's, it creates really interesting content because he has these athletes who talk about, hey, it was really weird being in the locker room 24, you know, for the past 15 years of my life. And now all that's done. And, you know, I have to go on and, and live a regular business job. And here's also the benefits of it. So, you know, that's a really unique approach. And he gets to sprinkle in a lot of real estate about that too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's some great advice. And, and, and similar to what you were saying, I think there's this gentleman, uh, Oh man, uh, what's his name? Uh, this, he, he's a uh, man. Anyway, so there, there's this gentleman who runs a very, very popular podcast. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he always talks about how your vibe will find your tribe. So you yeah. know, so and and it's one of those things where you know, there's people out there that you know maybe they're listening to this podcast and maybe they think, oh, this guy's ridiculous. Maybe they're thinking of me or even Rob or anyone, right? But but there are people out there. Uh, that will eventually resonate with what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, if anything, uh, like Rob was saying, you're just getting started um, and then, you know, trying to trying to find a unique way to be able to present yourself that is of value to the, the marketplace is, is of value too. So that's awesome. And then we had a question about uh, headphones to recommend. Um, you know, Seinhauser is one that I bought that's under a hundred bucks. Uh, I don't know, Rob, if you have any in particular that you'd recommend. I mean, I've just been using these Audio Technicas. They're under 100 bucks. They're, they're really good quality. I would say with one thing you want to consider with headphones is just use a hardwire connection. Um, Bluetooth is unreliable and it can create legs. And it's and to be honest, like where that kind of comes into effect, especially is within editing primarily, um, you know, just getting off a little bit on your tracks. But I would say get a good hardwire pair of headphones that cover your full ears too. A studio style headphone but um i mean you can go to guitar center you can go to sweetwater.com uh various different places uh that can do that but i would say that good price range is probably between 50 and uh, 100 bucks excuse me for sure no of course so another question that i had was let's say that you know there's probably some people that are listening to this that maybe already have a podcast maybe there are a few episodes in or they've been doing it for a little while but they're just not seeing the the, the traction uh, that they quote unquote had thought in their head initially. So what are some of the, what are some of the advice that you would share with those individuals pertaining to, you know, strategies that they can do to increase their, their, their listenership or, or their reach? Yeah, for sure. So no, number one thing I would, I would say is the algorithms of social media continue to get tougher and tougher. Um, so you're always going to have to account for that. And especially in business based world, there is a push toward paid advertising. So sometimes you, you do want to, if you're looking for fast growth and you don't have a, a huge marketing push that you can put into as far as the multifaceted plan of it, sometimes doing some paid advertising into a different sector, you know, on Facebook or LinkedIn or anything like that can help a lot. Um, patience is really, really important. And then recognizing that, Hey, Marketing the podcast is probably one of the hardest parts about it. It can be. It takes the, the most time. And you really, really want to come up with a multifaceted plan that incorporates social media, incorporates outreach. Facebook or LinkedIn groups is one of the major things that you can be on right now because then you can actually engage with your audience and invite people on there. Um, what else? Trying to another huge thing. And I think this is one of the biggest thing. Remember, we have like a million podcasts out there right now. Try to be on other podcasts if you're able to, you know, try to find those uh, individuals who are, you know, doing a little bit better than you even and say, Hey, I love, I can provide value to your show. Would you have me on? And then let's make sure that we staple this all together at the end, not just leave it, you know, be like, Oh, well, thanks for having me on your podcast. Maybe I'll never talk to you again because <laughs> I see that happen all the time and say, Hey, let's market this now. Let's come up with the social media post, schedule these out properly, make sure that the proper hashtags are in there, the proper links are in there, uh, that they're directed to the proper place to listen to this show. So that would be one thing. And then the other thing, um, I would say on is, you know, the same thing for you. If you, if you're, if you're a guest based podcast, having those personalities, um, on can can give you a tremendous boost but you have to make sure that you're not just relying on the podcast alone for it to get marketed so 100 
Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more with you. I think I think that the the some and this is in any endeavor when you're talking about marketing yourself is that it's a constant thing. You have to always put yourself out there on social platforms, uh, you know, via your email marketing and stuff like that. We always notify people uh, that are on the list for the commercial real estate one on one meetup. We send it out every month or every other week, I should say, to remind people about to come into this type of event. Um, and then similar to what you were saying is leveraging the network of those individuals that you ultimately interview yeah. is huge too. And and again, it is very much based, if it's a guest-based podcast, that's something you could leverage. Now, if you're in an individual podcast, maybe that's a little bit uh, different, but still, I mean, leveraging other people's network is huge. I mean, cause you have a broad network of people that you talk to and, yeah. you know, I do as well. And so, you know, the cross promotional opportunities there are huge and I love the fact that you shared going on other people's podcasts as well, because that's been something that's helped me a ton, you know, on a variety of different things, uh, you know, with the YouTube channel and podcasting and everything else is just getting in front of people who are in the same industry as you that also have podcasts, being a guest on their show and now opening yourself up to their network as well. So great, great strategies you shared, man, really. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, something else to consider too is um, also look at your podcast almost as a new resume, as a new LinkedIn profile and put it on there, of course, but recognize the more and more that you do it, the more and more you'll stand out, especially in a business field as like an expert of what you're talking about. So if because you have that podcast, let's say there's a particular organization that's looking for keynote speakers, right? Realize how having all that content and being able to clip that out, video is that important factor that we talked about, realize how that can be a door opener into those types of events to get in front of a big audience and then to also still promote your show. So time is a time is a big important factor, and then leveraging you know the time and the content you've produced from that time um, to get in front of a bigger audience is going to be really important. Yeah, I know, and and I'll and I'll kind of echo on that as well. I interviewed uh, Whitney Sewell, who's a, a he's he he runs one of the longest running uh, multifamily podcasts in the in the world. Um, he's got like fourteen or fifteen hundred episodes uh, that he's recorded. Um, it's a daily podcast. Um, and he was telling me that, you know, when he first started, didn't get a lot of traction. Uh, but, you know, each subsequent year, he started getting more and more opportunities. And, you know, within a two year period, he was speaking on those stages that he used to watch people yeah. speak on. And he's speaking in front of like 500 people. And the reason why he got those opportunities was because he became a thought leader in his industry in a relatively short period of time, because he interviewed like 500 people. So, you know, at that point, they're, you're getting your name out there, you're getting your reach out there, and it's a very broad network that you start opening up. And I love the fact you said time because I know a lot of people who start something and they do like three podcast episodes or four podcast episodes and then it falls off. Like, do you know what the statistics are regarding, I guess, you know, the, the cutoff for a lot of people when they stop doing a podcast? I think it's actually shifted downwards a little bit. So it used to be like 15 and now I believe it's around like 8 through 12 is when people are cutting off and that's just not enough. You know, we've had, we've had podcasts who went a year to get to a thousand downloads per month. And now all of a sudden those numbers are spiking because there is that it's just like a real estate investment and every other investment, there is that compound interest effect that's involved with listenership of the show. So the longer and longer you're around, the more and more listeners you're getting, then that audience will grow just naturally that way. But you still got to be interesting and authentic and have a good message. So, you know, sure. a really good thing to work on above everything else is make sure, and this is the most important one, maybe I should have started here, is make sure that your podcast is something that you would want to listen to. You know, if, you, if you're listening back to your podcast and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'd listen to it. I mean, obviously, you know, then, then you need to adjust that element and ask for feedback too you are going to do something that's going to um, open you up for criticism. And to be a good podcaster, you, you have to be able to take some of that criticism and, and welcome it and better yourself for your audience with that criticism. So. That's some phenomenal advice. So we kind of gave some advice to those who are looking to start a podcast, those who have already been established and want to grow their podcast. Where do you see the future of podcasting going over the next decade? And you kind of mentioned it briefly, but I thought if you could elaborate a little bit on that, that would be helpful. Yeah, there's there's so many different things. One of the most exciting things that happened recently is to see how much more involved the social media realms are getting with podcasting. Uh, in June, Facebook 
you know, they, they launched an internal RSS feed capabilities onto their own platform. So if you're on mobile and if you have a podcast and you're listening to this right now and you don't know about it, link your feed from your host platform to your Facebook page now. And you'll see everything pop up just as if it was on Apple or Spotify and Facebook and people can subscribe and they can get notifications for one of the biggest places to get noted, the biggest social media platform there is. They can listen directly from there on and off feed. So that should be a, a big, a big interest to say, Hey, where's podcasts going? Um, you know, you see the acquisitions for some of these bigger guys like Spotify. Um, we we won't talk to much so much about Joe Rogan, but that was a big launch into, Hey, where's podcasts getting in the future? These, you know, reported on two, $200 million deals. Um, so, so it's getting big. One thing I really like recently is, you know, to, to segue off of Facebook is LinkedIn just announced that they have a podcast network that they've started for internal podcasts. Think similar to NPR in a sense with the various different shows that they have under their platform. LinkedIn had a very successful podcast last year. They recognized the benefits of it. So they're opening up a network for it, which in my opinion, and you know, you can, you can come back at me if I'm wrong in the future. I'd be saying within the next year or two, you're going to see a lot of those Facebook type features for specific to podcasting on LinkedIn as well. And I'm really, really excited for that because LinkedIn just continues to evolve since their acquisition, um, you know, in favor to me. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that this platform is going to continue to to grow out and be accessible to, you know, the basic individuals um, who need to use it the most. Um, and, you know, what we're doing is really kind of as, as, in a sense, different in the industry is providing that local network approach to it. So I think that you'll see a lot more collaboration with local podcasters doing things similar, having get togethers, having meetups, having having these common spaces and, and really helping promote their shows through it. And then through local promotion and advertising as well, especially since you can combine the social media realms with it. Yeah, for sure. And, and I, and I have I, a lot more to say, but you know, Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and, and you're right. And, and again, you're an expert on this and you follow all the trends that are happening within the industry and you, where you, where you potentially see the industry going. And similar to you, I think you were the one who told me about the Facebook, uh, you know, the, the new Facebook functionality pertaining to podcasting. And, you know, I think that's indicative of the fact that again, why would Facebook do that? They understand that people love listening to podcasts and if they can keep you on the platform instead of you having to go to Apple podcast or having to go to these other types of platforms in order to listen to podcasts, it's better, more, more beneficial for them. And I think that, like you said, LinkedIn is probably going to follow suit pretty soon uh, within the next year or so as a result, because they, 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 they understand that, okay, if I can keep them on the platform, that's been more beneficial for me from, from a, uh, you know, sponsorship dollars. That's more beneficial for me for, for advertising dollars. So I, again, I think that that's going to be, like you said, uh, a trend that, that is going to occur over the next maybe year or so. Yeah. And if I might add too, you know, when you think about what Facebook is particularly does really well is, you know, they try to focus on that local based network of different things of connecting people together. And, you know, you start, I don't know if you've heard or know too much about like dynamic ad insertion, for example, that a lot of the hosting platforms are starting to put on, but they're basically making in, in host platforms and by host platform, just in case you're not uh, familiar with what I'm talking about, this is your places like sound or anchor, um, that are actually, you're, you're inputting all of your, your actual files onto this host platform, and then it's distributing everything outwards. They have a lot more capabilities and with dynamic ad insertions, what people are able to do instead of recording just live feeds to where a point where they would have to, you know, submit a new file to put a ad a new ad onto that podcast, dynamic ad insertions are actually going to insert ads automatically and you can do it directly from the hosting platforms. This opens up a lot of capability, especially on the local side for people to start with smaller advertisers. And as they grow out, offer the entire back library with less work to those advertisers. And, you know, really a local type trial approach too. So I think that you're going to see a lot of growth for podcast advertising and you're going to continue to see the cap the abilities for regular people who aren't going to have the next, well, let's face it. Not a lot of people are going to have the Joe Rogan show. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a high milestone to reach as far as viewership, but people are, you know, having in those thousand 
listeners per month range and upwards of that, they're going to be able to start monetizing and they're going to be able to make more money off that monetization in the future. For sure. No, I couldn't agree more with you. So I guess for those individuals who want to learn a little bit more about the, the, the podcasting space as a whole, do you have some resources that you, you know, would normally recommend they check out? Uh, I really like, let me make sure I'm not, I'm not butchering this because I'm going to give them a little bit of a shout out. Uh, there's a, there's a, a email that you can sign up for, for called pod news and they connect a lot of people together. I'm trying to remember who's hosting platform. I get a lot of my industry news from pod news. Um, so they're really good looking at the different various, if you go to sound or FM and you look at some of their blog pages, um, they have a lot of good information too tons of good different um, Facebook groups. Uh, and then too, we've launched a few different blogs ourselves. So we're getting more into the education space. I'll be releasing a blog soon. That's all about, um, about setting your guest up for success. For example, we have a blog on our website, which is speakeasynetwork.com. And our blog's called the blind pig because we have a little bit of a prohibition theme to our to our company um, there. But you know, that's another place that we're going to be trying to put out a lot of educational tips on. That's awesome. No, and, and for those of you guys who are listening to this in a podcast format, we're going to go ahead and I'll, I'll talk to Rob after the, the call and we'll get those links so we can share them in the description below. Uh, so if you guys are watching this in a YouTube format or a podcast format, it'll be in the description. All right. Go, so I'll, go ahead. I was going to say that 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 um, place I like is it's podnews.net. Podnews.net. Okay. We'll, we'll include that link as well in, in the description. So all right. Well, I want to keep it relatively short on the questions on my end. I want to make sure that those individuals who are watching us uh, either on uh, you know, LinkedIn or in the Zoom chat right now, uh, if you guys have any questions in particular, feel free to type away. Um, we're happy to answer as many questions as we can. And if you don't mind reading those questions out to me. I'll, I will. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm no. away from the, the, we have, the chat no, box. I got you. I got you. All right. Um, let's see. So... Abdullah I said, can you please say that quote again? If I can call it that, lol, uh, where you you said, if everyone likes you, no yeah. one is going to love you. Is yeah, who, do you no, know who I, said that? I, you know, I I wanted I keep giving the the um the credits to Simon Sinek, and and the reason is I thought I heard it from him, and I haven't really figured out exactly who said it. So, uh, but but what it is is that yeah, if you build something that um everybody likes then nobody's going to love it. You know, if you try to find, um, man, I think it's Rory Sutherland's, um, there's a book that talks about that really good called Alchemy by Rory Sutherland. And he kind of talked about how they built the cockpit for the for a, a aircraft based around the average person. And what they realize is like, oh, well, these are just metrics that bring everything into an aggregate. It's not really, the average person really isn't this size, right? So if you try to build something for the average person, you might just end up with a really, really uncomfortable seat for most people, except for that person who falls into the middle of the statistics. I think it's the same can be said on, you know, podcasting. If you try to be the every man's man, well, you're gonna, you're not gonna relate that well with people because we're all so unique. Mm-hmm. Couldn't agree yeah, more, so really. if, you, if you build something that everybody likes, nobody's going to love it. Great share. All right. So we have a question. Uh, uh, so he wants to see if we could talk a little bit about platform ownership and control. So i.e. censorship. Um, do you have any comments on that? Uh, in terms of censorship, you know, that's the good thing. And, and I hope that it continues to be this way. And you know, what's happening with Spotify is kind of showing it. Yeah, they've removed some, some episodes, but I think there is this, there's, um, there's this greatness that there wasn't too much censorship on podcasts and, and too much broadcast control that you would see in traditional media sources in the, in the background. But the main thing is, is, you know, what you have to be more worried about in the future is, is just trying to see how trends continue to evolve on that some of that might not get um, pulled from a your hosting platform like sounder might get pulled from youtube for example um and then what was the other part of that question 
Yeah, I mean, it was just related to uh, platform ownership. So, you know, I, and maybe this, maybe if, if you could clarify that, I, from my understanding, like, you know, how, how do the, the rules pertaining to, you know, those distribution channels like Anchor and Podbean, uh, does that affect your ownership and how you potentially, uh, you know, can monetize your, po- your podcast? Or I don't know if, if that's a good question or not. No, I would need to dig a little bit deeper into that one. But from the, mm-hmm. from my basic understanding of is, um, as far as ownership on that platform, you're not you're not necessarily signing away um, rights to any of those platforms. You can you can pull your feed at any time, but once you do put something out on the internet, it's out on the internet, so it's going to end up living somewhere. And if you really yeah. need to, you know, we have podcasters who are at that point of starting to trademark, register, copyright a lot of the different things that they're going to be doing. Um, but no, I wouldn't say that's my area of expertise, though. Great, 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 great advice. All right. So uh, Abdullah was asking, if you're starting out with a podcast, how many minutes should you limit your podcast to? Um, hey, sorry. The reality right. of it, you know. Uh, the, you know, the reality of monetization, like you have your average metrics of it where it's like, hey, for every 1,000 listeners, a, a advertiser is willing to pay, I think it's down like $26, somewhere between $24 and $26 for a 30-second mid-roll spot. That is changing so drastically, though. Um, and especially on, like, as I was mentioning with our company on this local side, we're seeing a lot more opportunities pick up. Um, and just like with a lot of advertising and monetization, you know, it comes down to your negotiation skills a lot and what else you can offer to that individual who wants to sponsor or potentially sponsor for your show. Um, you know, one thing that I always say is, Hey, not only are you getting a 30 second mid roll of credit, for example, where I'm actually going to shout out your company, but we'll pair that with some social media posting. So you're, you will be mentioned and linked and tagged within our social media post. You're going to be put into the show notes and that's going to live on every single platform and provide you with a backlink. Um, and you know, it's just kind of working in other supplementary deals that are kind of involved with that production process anyways can get you a lot more bang for your bucks in terms of monetization of your show. Hopefully that kind of answered your question. Let me know if you had any more um, to, on that particular topic. Yeah, real quick. Well, I put it in the chat. I don't want to hog up the, the audience. But basically I was saying, do you feel like they moved the needle as the platform gets popular on how to monetize? Like it may have been one way, you know, in the beginning or one year and then you see those, those, updated terms and services and you're like man i didn't even see this coming and now it's like twice as hard to monetize have you ever experienced that no not necessarily in my experience it's becoming easier to monetize there's there's more opportunities this is what we were mentioning earlier with dynamic ad insertion is is one of those one of those topics i think you're going to continue to see grow so um no i've i've noticed nothing but the ease of monetization for you know even the smaller shows because you can leverage it in so many different ways. Cool. That's awesome. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And sorry yeah. for the, for some reason, I don't know why my connection has been acting up, but hopefully it doesn't continue to do that going forward. But uh, so Abdullah was asking if, if you're starting out with podcasts, how many minutes should you limit your podcast to? Depends on your topic and your wind too. How long, how long can you sustain? Um, I, I would say this though, if you are talking about entertainment, cultural topics, stories, things like that, you can go a longer window, right? Um, because people are going to sit in there. They're not, um, they're there for fun, right? They're there for comedy. They're there for the story. They're there for the feature length movie, possibly in the road trip. Um, but if you're going to do a business-based podcast uh, and you know, you're, you're specifically trying to give something of value that your listeners can use afterwards within their everyday life. I would try to limit that a little bit just because of people's capacity to learn, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, 25 to 45 minutes is probably a good range for that. And two, 
you know, don't, don't try to find that max. There's tons of different successful podcasts are in that five to 15 minutes range. They're very clear, concise. They're like, Hey, here's our specific reason for why we're podcasting. We want you to have this 15 minute podcast over your coffee. So you can digest this information quickly and then immediately go put it into action or to be on marketing advice, real estate advice, a motivational context of the day, you know, it, it, it can really form into a, a various different ways. But that's, that's how I kind of look at it is maybe those three realms is what are you trying to provide with your podcast to your audience and then base your, your timing on that. And then their feedback too. You know, if, if someone's like, Hey, I love your podcast, but I've been, uh, you know, I, I don't have three hours to, to listen to you today. <laughs> um, and various, various, various different people keep saying that then yeah, maybe adjust the length a little bit. Definitely. That's great advice. Yeah. There's this gentleman, uh, it's, he's a commercial real estate coach in, in Australia. His name's Derek Akrobiak. He's a buddy of mine that we interviewed on our podcast and his podcast is 10 to 15 minutes long. It's just him hopping on and kind of talking about a particular topic and he just goes off the cuff, talks about it. And then, like you said, there's the Joe Rogans would he talked for three hours. So, um, I think there's, uh, yeah. yeah and, and you got to think he has the most, <clears throat> some of the most interesting people in the world on that podcast sometimes in various different, like really eclectic people. So, you know, there's the grace to want to hear those stories a little bit longer. So, you know, just once again, we can kind of circle back, like think about how long you would listen to your show. And that might be a good metric to base it off of too. Great advice. So Clarence asks, how much of the podcasts are impromptu versus scripted? That's a good question. That's a, that's a great question. And I, I think it, um, there's no magic formula for that either. It's, it's varies from the, from the individual we have. And just in my experience from being around, you know, producing, um, various, various different podcasts. I have some that come in there, you know, perfectly scripted and they have their topic points and they flow it together really, really well. And they don't even have anybody in the seat next to them. Um, and then I have people who come in every single week and they create magic behind the mic with just a rant. So what are you the most comfortable with naturally? Do you, are you a good talker? Do you want to be super organized? Like kind of base it off that. If, if, Writing out a super scripted show brings you stress and anxiety, but just flowing on the mic like we're doing right now is easy to do. Then just do that. You know, have fun with it. Mix it up too. We have those podcasters who are coming in all the time and, you know, they, they almost segment it that way where they'll have a podcast on the first week. That's an interview with somebody. The next week is their 15 minute rants. Um, and they're going to adjust over time, depending on the feedback from their audience about what their audience wants the most. Great advice. Really. All right. Chuck asked, <clears throat> he said, I may have missed it. What did LinkedIn do, do a few days ago that was new, noteworthy? Yeah, they, they've launched, they're in the beginning stages of launching their own internal podcast network. So basically just like NPR, for example, that has various different podcasts that, you know, fall under that, that company, LinkedIn's going to be doing the same thing. And they've already signed on existing podcast um, to that platform. So, you know, now somebody's podcast is going to have LinkedIn in the top left or bottom right corner of it. And they're going to have, you know, eventually more tools and features for those podcast creators on that platform, which hopefully will in turn turn into the wider audience to where it doesn't have to be an in-platform network podcast to get that same type of capability. Definitely. All right. So uh, any other questions? I want to make sure we, we address all you guys' questions. So one, someone did ask, so Craig asked if uh, some people who opt on late, so this is actually going to be recorded as well. So uh, we will have a digital version of this in on a YouTube format. And then also we distribute this via the podcast, which is the commercial real estate one-on-one -on -one podcast. So if you guys want to listen, it's an audio version. It will be available as well. And we usually email out links to these the next day. So if you guys attended today, you will be receiving an email that will include these links as well. So you'll have them available. <clears throat> um, any other questions? I want to make sure we ad address all your questions. Yeah, I have another one. What about not everybody may want to be the uh, star of the podcast. What about the, um, behind the scenes and, you know, I guess uh, building that type 
part of it, i.e. like editing. You, know, you may want to just be, you know, help somebody edit their their own podcast. It's it's funny that you say that because believe it or not, I primarily spend my time. I, I don't have my own podcast right now. It might be, I, I did for a little bit, but I love the editing part of it. That's my favorite part. I love the production. I love helping people build their podcast. My other business partner, whose name is Rob Johnson, um, which isn't confusing at all, right? Uh, he has a podcast called The Wayne Cast that you know, talks a lot, a lot about podcasting and different business topics that I would highly recommend listening to, but is, you know, building out the, uh, the production end of things. Um, and let me clarify this question a little bit too, if you don't mind, are you asking about, you know, potentially like what you need to do to properly build out production for yourself or who you should hire? Or, um, if you could just restate that question one more time. More so if you're trying to assist other podcasters with their content um, in particular, not, not for myself. Yeah, no, it's, it's needed. It's how we started this company is because it's, it is a needed area right now. Um, and I think that it's perfectly fine to start a podcast by yourself, but if it really starts growing, you're going to need a production team eventually. Okay. Um, because number one, like you, if you're doing that, you pro your time's probably better spent going and meeting people and shaking hands and doing the business that brings you business in the first place. Like focus on the things that make you money, right? And exactly. you know, and and leverage your 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 income. You know, find that balance between hey, what can I hand off to somebody else? What can I delegate? Um, if you're producing a podcast, to and you and you're really concerned about the uh, the quality of it. You know, you can average anywhere from if you're recording for an hour, put an hour and a half into the back end for production between editing the show, distributing the show, coming up with your show notes, doing the social media strategy, and all the planning that goes into it. For every hour you record, you're doing at least that in the back end. And there are definitely services that can be offered built around that. And many people are doing it, including myself. Okay. And yeah, yeah, if you ever want to talk, I, I'd love to reach out to me. Uh, my email will be in here. It's johnstone at waynemedia.com. Reach out to me, man. I'd love to talk to you about it and just kind of tell you what we're doing over here. And see sure, you, yeah, you definitely, kind of definitely. With that. For sure. Awesome. So uh, we had a, another question. Um, oh, so what about editing podcasts yourself? The tools, tips, ideas. So <clears throat> I can even say a little bit on this. I mean, yeah. And well, actually, you you go first, and then I'll 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 uh I'll share. Yeah. So you you need as far as editing tools, like we said, have a have a good mic, have a good audio board that you can adjust the levels on. Uh, I will say one thing that's really important with audio editing: the space that you're recording in, and the pre-production side of editing or um of producing that is just as important as it is more important than what you can do when you are editing audio tracks to make them sound good you are actually adding to and taking away from tracks with you know a digital or analog conversion most likely digital and if you have a bad space that you're recording in most likely there's not much you can do to fix that audio or if you don't have your settings proper on your mic or if you don't have, you know, your settings proper on your board, there's a lot of good um, boards that you can get. Roadcaster Pro is a perfect example of one that can do a lot of that work for you. And if you tune those in properly, you'll have to do less editing in the back end. And I think that that's really important to consider. Um, in terms of editing platforms, there's so many out there that you can use. Like even if you're if you're starting off and you're on Anchor FM, they have their own tools on Anchor FM. Um, there's tons of GarageBand. You can edit in GarageBand for, for um, iMac. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, as you go along, if you have Adobe Suite, Audition and everything, Lightroom that they have is really, really good too. Um, we use DaVinci over here because we're heavily, you might not be able to see this, but we have five or four other cameras over here that um, are in the area. So we do a lot of combined on DaVinci. Um, hopefully that answered that question a little bit. No, Raphael, you can, you can carry on with it. Yeah, no. And, and, and this may be contrary to what you're asking, but you know, from the beginning, I, I always outsource the editing and the main reason for it is that that's not really my expertise and, and being able to edit the podcast was taken, would, would have taken me way too long. Uh, absolutely way too long. And, you know, given the fact that, w and I don't know what your, what your, what profession you're in or anything like that. Uh, if, if, if that is what you're, 
sole focus is, then that may be something that you should consider. But I'm of, I've always been of the mindset that, you know, do your highest and best use and then surround yourself with experts who can support you uh, outside of, you know, what you're doing, your core competency, I should say. Because another thing is you don't want to get to a point where, you know, you're doing your first four, five, six, seven episodes, and then you get annoyed or disheartened because of the fact that, you know, you have to edit every single one. It's taking you two to three hours. Now, not to say that's what's going to happen, but, you know, I've seen a lot of people who get frustrated because they're like, oh my gosh, now I have to edit all the video and edit audio and everything else. Whereas if you get an expert involved, like a Rob or any, anyone else, really, it helps a ton with that because now it's like, all I have to do is show up, record and distribute it, you know, give it to whoever you need to do and let's get it, let's get it done. So you know, it, it, I guess what I'm saying more so if, it, if anything is just reduce the barriers because otherwise it just becomes a little, it co- becomes difficult to manage. One thing I want to add to just to add to advice um, that, might, that might kind of relate to this is, is recognize the importance of video within your marketing realm, but also recognize that if you are producing a, you know, an audio mix such as this, your primary audience for the most part, there are exceptions. Um, are going to be driven towards the audio platform but those video clips are tremendous with helping humanize you as the as the as the host and then also great for marketing that's going to catch attention too so having a little bit of a video element for a podcast even if it's just for those clips i think is crucial definitely and, you know it's been helping our podcasters out tremendously yeah and, I, and i'll even share on that because we've been doing short clips for a podcast that i run called the commercial real estate academy podcast and we've been sh- distributing short clips ahead of the podcast going out and the reach we've been getting on the short clips is pretty significant. So, you know, they do work and there's a reason why people are doing short clips because it gives them a little taste of what the podcast is going to be about. And then it could divert them to back to your podcast and whether it's a YouTube link that you're providing them or an Apple podcast link or whatever, and then it just gets them potentially engaged with what you're doing. So definitely would recommend you utilizing short clips. For sure. 100%. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I don't know if we have any other questions. Looks like all the equipment. Uh, Craig was asking about the different equipment that we use. And, you know, Craig, we actually talked a little bit about some of the podcast equipment at the beginning of the podcast, which, like, again, I'll be happy to share uh, once this is fully, it's, it's already going to be recorded and everything. So um, I'll be distribute this over to you. So you'll, you'll have that access as well. So. Okay. Are you guys keeping up with the um, the blockchain platforms? For as far as podcasting go, like how the, how those are integrated, no, I can't say I have. Okay. I, I've seen a little bit on um on some of those sites I followed, like Pod News. I was telling you about with their mm-hmm. um, newsletters, but those haven't been the links I've been clicking on. I'd love to hear something about it. what what do you have? Well, what I'm finding out is, you know, again back to the whole censorship. Like you said, if you put something out there and a particular platform doesn't agree with the YouTube or, or Instagram or whatever, um, they pull it down, then it's gone. You know, you don't have yeah. a way to voice. Now, um, the technology with the pla- the uh, blockchain is once it's up, it's up. It can't be pulled. It can't be retracted at all. So you see a lot of uh, I've seen a lot of, um, let's say, you know, the, the top tier podcasters are starting to um, integrate their content. And they'll just like, it's like a dual stream. Like, you know, they'll, they'll shoot it here, put it on YouTube, but they also have it on their um, blockchain platform as well. Just in case any drama goes on with, with YouTube, it's still up. And then it's still starting, it's starting to flow over there. And then of course you have the whole monetization situation. Again, like I said, it's 100% subscription base. Yeah. So I've seen a couple like uh, uh, library.tv and odyssey.com, which I think they're one in the same, but it's just a matter of, like I said, it's all, um, blockchain base. Once the content is up, you have it can never be pulled back down, and there's no right. censorship over there. Sean, I'm looking forward to our conversation together. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I know it, it seems like a very interesting proposition. So we'll definitely be interested in hearing the news that's coming down the pike regarding that. So yeah. awesome. Well, if we don't have any more questions, again, Rob, we greatly appreciate your time. Uh, you know, you're really a wealth of knowledge on podcasting and. You know, I've asked you questions a lot of times pertaining to different things. And, you know, you've always been super helpful and, and engaging. And hopefully, you know, those individuals who are watching this or, or, or engaging uh, really do reach out to you and learn more about your, what you guys do. But if, if people wanted to do that, what would you recommend they do? Yeah. So 
first off, Raphael, thanks for having me on here again. I really appreciate it. I, I always appreciate the time I get to spend and, and learn from you too. You're incredibly driven. And and if anybody wants to see somebody successfully market their podcast and do it well, I mean, Raphael is a good person to look at. Uh, I, I think you're doing a lot of right things and it's, it's fun to follow you and I've learned from you. So especially in this realm too, uh, if you, if you'd like to learn more about what, you know, if conversation with me, you can always reach out to me at John Stone, J O H N S T O N E at Wayne Uh, and then go ahead and visit our websites too. There's contact forms on there. There's information that you can reach out to. And that's, uh, the company, the, the podcasting specific company, speakeasy podcast network. And then the website is speakeasy network.com and please like, and follow us on social media. On top of that, too, we have about, yeah, dozens and dozens of podcasts that you can listen to. And if you go onto that website and you click on shows in our navigation panel, you're going to see a lot of them that you can tie into. And especially if you're in, in these, you know, Michigan, Louisville area, a really kind of Ann Arbor or Louisville area, and you want to, you see a show that you might be a good guest on, go ahead and reach out to me about that, too. I, one of my favorite things about my job every single day is making those networking connections. Uh, it, you know, if I were to leave on a note, it's podcasting is networking. If you do any type of networking groups, picture this. Having a podcast is the best one-on-one -on -one you'll ever have with anybody. That's all there is to it. You are giving them so much by having that platform and creating that conversation, and there's so much you can do with those connections afterwards. So even if you're not a podcaster, if you have something to say, try to jump on a podcast and meet an individual and start a relationship through it. That's amazing advice. No, and so we're gonna we're gonna share uh, Rob's contact information below. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, it's gonna be in the, the description below. If you guys are listening to this in a podcast format, whether Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever, it will be in the description as well. So again, thank you all for tuning in uh, to the podcast and really the meetup. Uh, like we said, we do this every other week um, to, and we bring in a variety of speakers to talk about different topics pertaining to commercial real estate. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for your time and thank you all. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks, Great Raphael. Job. And thanks everybody. It was a, it was a privilege to be here today. Bye -bye. Awesome. See you guys.